The Royal Society for the Conservation of Nature was one of the first voluntary organisations ever established in this whole region. Um, and it was set up really to try and protect the fantastic ecosystems and nature that this country has. And it has an amazing variety of sites, incredible landscapes from the tip of the Rift Valley right through to the forests in the northern part of the country. We are investing in tourism for the benefit of nature because ultimately tourism does three main things. It protects the site, it brings revenue to protect the site, but it also supports a whole host of local communities. Because the local communities here, they actually do still live off the land, many of them. They still use the very resource that is being protected. And so we have to find ways in which we can integrate their right to the land and their right to having a livelihood with actually protecting that site from some of the pressures that are now on those areas. The first reserve established by RSCN was the Shomari Reserve in the Eastern Desert. It's an area of relatively flat desert land, but it was very important because it became the first home for the Arabian Oryx after it had become extinct in the region. And the Arabian Oryx is really the symbol of Arabia, this magnificent white antelope which lived in the deserts of the region and was actually, in the end, brought to the edge of extinction by overhunting. And now we have a herd of over a hundred animals. Now in the reserve you can see the Oryx if you like, living testimonies to conservation. One of really the magical places in, in Jordan is the Azraq Oasis. 25 million cubic meters of water used to spread out into the desert and it was a magnet for migrating birds. The Royal Society, with an international project under the Global Environment Fund, actually attempted and succeeded in restoring the heart of the oasis. Now water is pumped back onto the site and you've got the heart of the oasis back as it used to be. And although we haven't got the birds in their millions, you've actually got this incredible habitat of open water and reed beds and channels and walkways that is like it used to be 25 years ago. The Ajloon Forest Reserve is in the northern highlands of Jordan where there's a higher rainfall. So you've got rolling hills covered with Mediterranean oak. They have a lot of forest animals, things like wild boars, roe deer, and a lot of forest birds. In the spring, the whole forest floor is carpeted with flowers. And then in the autumn it gets cooler, the flowers have gone, but again it has this peaceful feel about it because you're in a forested area. Now the Mujib Reserve is situated right on the shores of the Dead Sea and it's probably the most spectacular reserve we have in terms of experiences for ecotourists. It has these two rivers that actually have carved enormous steep gorges through the heart of the reserve. And it's also the home for the ibex. These uh, animals live on the most incredible narrow ledges in the most precipitous mountains. And because it borders the Dead Sea, you get also the chance to swim in the Dead Sea, which is a really unique experience. Floating in this very saline water, which prevents you from sinking, is one of, again, the world's major experiences. Dana is in fact the largest reserve, nature reserve in Jordan. It cuts across the Great Rift Valley, which runs all along the western side of Jordan, from over a thousand meters high to below sea level in the space of only 12 kilometers. So you get this series of mountains that tumbles from the plateau at the top of the Rift Valley right down to the desert systems of Wadi Araba. It's a real melting pot of plants and animals because Jordan sits at the junction of three major continents, Europe, Africa and Asia. And representatives of all that flora and fauna from those three continents are all found in Dana. It also has about 25 endangered species. It's a real home for some of the world's most threatened creatures, including one that many visitors do see, which is the griffon vulture. The griffon vulture is a huge bird with a wingspan of over a meter and a half, and you see it cruising over the mountaintops Within this series of mountains, there's a whole range of things to do. We have a beautiful campsite that sits on a lovely plateau. 
And from the campsite, we have a number of hiking trails. We also have a very beautiful small guest house. People write poetry from this guest house because it's suspended above what one, one of the Queens of Jordan said was a 10 star view. And from that view, you can sit on your own terrace from your room and just contemplate nature and listen to the sounds of nature and enjoy also the sounds of the village from the little piper piping in his sheep to the sound of the mosque on the Friday morning from the call to prayer. At the bottom of the Rift Valley we're opening Finan Lodge. It's a real desert lodge and it's like a monastery in the desert. It's isolated, it's about six kilometers from the nearest village and it's made specially to be at the very cutting edge of environmentally friendly design but also uniquely designed like the old caravanserai that used to be in in this region. The caravanserai are where the camels brought all these amazing products from Arabia through to the Mediterranean and they used to have in effect motels where the camels were kept outside and the people then slept overnight and they bartered goods and they had this kind of incredible arabesque atmosphere and because it has no electricity because it's so isolated the whole building is lit by candles at night and imagine the romantic atmosphere that that would create in that building is really really something Wadi Rum is one of the must go to's in Jordan it's really a desert of mountains the scenery is so awe-inspiring and you can experience that scenery not just during the daytime but also at night. If you take one of the Bedouin camps and stay in a Bedouin camp in Rum, you see the most unbelievable panoply of stars. You get this chance to interact with a real Bedouin culture and Bedouin lifestyle. To live in this desert requires a very specialized way of approaching your livelihood because there's virtually no water, there's very little grazing, yet they manage to survive and make a, a livelihood through being very adapted to desert lifestyle. It's well known in the West because of Lawrence of Arabia. It was the place where Lawrence of Arabia visited uh, during his campaign against the Turkish armies. Um, and again, there are many places in Wadi Rum which are famous for an association with Lawrence of Arabia. Because RSEN has all of this network of reserves and has opened them up to tourism, we have to make people aware of the fact that they exist and to promote them. And we also need to promote all the small businesses that we've developed in those protected areas, which are all part of this package of helping nature, helping people, integrating the idea of a local economy to the protection of nature. And where better to do that than in the heart of downtown Amman? We decided to build a center called Wild Jordan to promote this idea that nature in Jordan can be enjoyed and experienced and where you can find out information about the places to visit, the uh, activities we offer and where if you wish you can book those activities. But not only that, we haven't just got tourist information here, we've got a very large nature shop and that nature shop is selling the products that are made by all of these communities in the protected areas we've been looking at we sell them here where we have the biggest in-country market. So we're actually creating more and more jobs in those rural communities and the more jobs we create, the more people believe that nature has a stake in their future. The Nature Shop and the Tourist Information is supported by a wonderful whole food cafe. The cafe spills out on, onto terraces which overlook the whole of the city and also of Jebel Kala, one of the most important historic sites in Amman. So overall it makes the perfect package of wrapping up this message of helping nature, helping people in the heart of the biggest population centre in the kingdom. <laughs>